Let us pray. Gracious God, your presence are still as sure today as the first time that you spoke them to your people. You have given us the spirit of promise and unity, and we thank you for the spirit of renewal. Renew in the whole church that passionate desire to reach out to you and forgive our lackness in loving you. May your kingdom come with power and unite all Christians in one mission to reach out in faith to everyone. May we see your glory in our worship today. Amen. God seeks the lost and offers hope to the hopeless. God rejoices over one soul restored. So God welcomes us and lets us in the past be the past. Therefore, let us rejoice and praise God for his wonderful goodnesses. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes were dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. They say that a dead man has no faults. In fact, when you go to a funeral, you don't hear the list of problems or challenges that their life or they faced in life. What you hear is all the positives. They were, they were a fine person. They were a caring person, no matter what. James writes this. He says, for all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes is, in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. Well, I've been around life a long time, and I can honestly tell you that there have been many mistakes that I have made. And the world, as well, has its ups and downs of mistakes, including our lives. The problem is, there is no perfect person that we know. In fact, well, here's what uh, Spurgeon had said years ago. He said, of, bed, of dead men we say nothing but good, but as for the living, they are tarred more or less with a black brackish and a black eye. Every head has a soft spot in it. Every heart has a black drop in it. Every rose has its pricks. Every day has its nights. These are life. We face a lot of challenges in all of our lives. Some of them are of our own doing. Some of them are the, the results of others around us. And I believe there are th some things we can do to help well, overcome these challenges, not only in ourselves, but how we deal with others in a loving and caring way. The very first thing we have to have is a proper attitude. Too many times when we are faced with challenges in life, we overreact. We overreact on the problem that's caused and make it, well, we make it worse than what it really is by sometimes our, our emotions, our own reactions, or the reactions of others. The other thing is, is that there are times when, well, we just have to accept the reality of the moment and realize that we can't change anything and everything around us 
to fit our needs or our wants. Actually, it's impossible to change somebody else, let alone impossible to change ourselves. I love the fact that as we get farther away from the new year, many people have already not only forgotten that they made a resolution, but, well, they're not even close to keeping that resolution. That's the reality of our own life. The other part of the challenges that come with our faults is that sometimes we like to blame other people. I always tease my wife at uh, night, I like to end my day with just a little bit of peanut butter. And she goes, why do you keep doing that? In fact, my diabetic doctor keeps telling me, well, you need to give that peanut butter up. And I'm thinking to myself, but my mother started it. It was all my mother's fault. The real, the real truth of it is, I like peanut butter. And I don't normally eat it any other time, but I like it at the end of my day. And sometimes, well, sometimes even in our own lives, in the lives of ourselves in dealing with others and others dealing with us. We have to accept the responsibility of, well, we're not perfect. And because we're not perfect, we should also then give them the same element that we expect. A little room for their imperfections. It's a little bit of practicing uh, do unto others as you would like them to do to you. The, uh, another thing is, sometimes we try and overanalyze it. I love all these self-help books. Uh, they can help you lose weight, get smarter, read a book, write a paper, get a better job, do all kinds of things. Sometimes we overthink how we can change the other person instead of underthink how we can change ourselves. And sometimes, I believe we just have to accept the challenges of life. And that means that we're not perfect and in our imperfection, that we need to live with that and try and overcome it. That is the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives as Christians. The power of the Holy Spirit helps us overcome our imperfections, our fault lines, in spite of ourselves. And then finally, the last thing is, I don't try and compare myself to anybody else because, well, you know why? God made me unique. And in that uniqueness, sometimes, well, sometimes the imperfections of creation and of that first sin slip in. And I have to then ask for help from God and let God and the Holy Spirit begin dealing in my life so that I can try. So that with the help of the Lord, I can become a better person and overcome or set aside the faults that come with my living. Now, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the glory, and the kingdom of God forever. Amen.